what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, over the past couple of days, you had one of your premier members of the class decommit. That is uh, four-star tight end Tavion Galloway. And um, he just, you know, classic tweet, whatever. I've, I've decided to take a step back, decommit, respect, you know. No interviews, please. No interviews, please, et cetera, et cetera, whatever, whatever. Um, here's my take. Good recruits decommitting. Uh, it's somewhat disappointing is what I would say. Like, like I... I, I understand being upset because especially if you follow this stuff and you're like watching his highlight tape and you get like all excited and all you think is, oh man, like he's going to be so good for you that anytime you decommit and then you fall in the rank, like whatever, like it's somewhat disappointing. But ultimately, there are two very key reasons why I don't care that much and why the impact of this is actually blunted quite a bit. The first is that, as we always talk about, Jake, recruiting on the micro level does not matter. I don't care about individual recruits, right? I care about the class. I care about how you bring what, what's the breadth of the talent that you are bringing in. Are you staying competitive? Individuals are going to be robust all the time. More importantly, Jake, with Tavion Galloway specifically, he's a tight end. Yeah, and, and that's not to disrespect the position of tight end because tight end's critical to the Wait, LSU why not? offense. My position gets disrespected all the time. Well, tight Chill. end's in a better spot than y'all. Y'all yeah. kind of evolved into tight ends in many ways. I mean, right? I'm talking about both my positions. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, fullbacks <laughs> are tight ends nowadays. That, that's Chill. what they end up becoming. But Chill. bad fullbacks. The point is, uh, it's honestly the tight ends aren't important in LSU's offense because they absolutely are. But if you're talking about Brian Kelly and Mike Denbrock, the, you don't have to worry about tight end. Like, they are going to be fine, right? I'm sure Galloway's going to be a great player. But again, that is the single position in which Denbrock and Kelly have proven to be able to turn out NFL after NFL player to get massive production out of taking, you saw the growth of Mason Taylor last year. Uh, you you look at signing Mac Markway, Jackson McGohan, Camorian Pimpton in this last class. You still have top 100 tight end in 24, 24 trade as green committed. So that's a busy room. And so if Chaz Michael Michaels is figure skating, Kelly and Denbrock are tight ends. So I'm not that worried about Tavian Galloway. And I wish him the best of luck wherever he ends up choosing. Yeah, you've got the number three tight end in the class already committed to you. And he is from the state of Louisiana to T-Bob's point. So again, I don't know what kind of player he is going to end up you know, being as far as Galloway, but this is someone that's from the state of Ohio. And that's always a little risky yep. whenever you go that far away from the state of Louisiana. If you can keep that player till signing day now, BK and staff, they have a history with having to do that, being mm -hmm. at Notre Dame. And maybe that hit rate is a little bit higher than normal. But right now, player from Ohio wants to look around a little bit more. He still could end up at LSU. As well, we have yeah, seen players yeah, yes, plenty true. of times commit to LSU, decommit, commit back, sign, play here. Um, so it's something to watch. But in the tight end class, he's number 17. And again, you have the number three tight end committed to you, a top 65 player in the country, 62 overall, third position, as we mentioned, second in the state of Louisiana in green from East Feliciana. So that's not a position where you're really concerned. And again, maybe you get this player as well. Now, one thing I love, though recent history has shown that maybe it's uh, a bit foolish to put your trust in, Jake, is I love an active commit who is really helping to grow the class and doing boots on the ground work. Now, it hasn't always worked out, right? Cardell Thomas was one of those. I mean, it just a really crucial piece of putting together that class for LSU, getting with friends, other recruits, and selling them on the idea. Walker Howard was. Okay, that didn't exactly end up working out right now. He's now at Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin. But you have another guy in Colin Hurley who has been doing it and then so, like doing it like those two names I just mentioned, but even to a further extent when it comes to how obsessed the quarterback appears to be with LSU, with the purple and gold, with trying to convince uh, other major recruits to come to Baton Rouge. And he was in town this last weekend with 2024 wide receiver Draylon Miller who um, is one of those guys, he set a June 29th commit date, but he's got all the offers, and it looks like LSU and USC are potentially the two schools uh, vying for his services. But I want to talk about Hurley.
for a second here, Jake, because he's got the Elite 11 Finals next week in Los Angeles. He's a five-star according to 247, a four-star with the other two major um, major uh, networks. And he pulled what I call a reverse evangel or an inverse Munro. He reclassified from 2025 <laughs> to 2024. So yeah. he bumped up to get to school sooner to well, try to make his dreams come true. Jokes on you. Uh, we've had players that John David Booty left after his junior year in high school and went to USC. Oh, that's right. Okay, okay. never mind. So throw that shade at West Monroe <laughs> and Blackwell. <laughs> okay. I mean, I think Evangel and West Monroe yeah. are both pretty uh, pretty. And by good the way, uh, Shreveport and West Monroe are not by each other uh, to those listening out there. I that thought still they were, and that. I learned that the hard way. Yeah. Uh, planning to go to a baptism and realizing, oh, my God, I have like yeah. a – five-hour drive or something ahead of me. Well, you look at yeah, Shreveport and West Monroe, about an hour and 40 minutes away from each other. Oh, okay. Maybe it's something. Maybe yeah. I don't but know. you're talking about going from here to Monroe, here to Shreveport. Yes, it's a different yeah. drive. Different drive. Just putting that out there, a little PSA. Uh, some more recruiting news. Joel Rogers from West Feliciana. He decides to commit to LSU. This is a four-star uh, prospect. He is someone that looks like he's going to be playing safety in the college ranks. He's a top 350 player in the nation, 31st at his position, eighth in the state of Louisiana. So you got a decommit, but you also got a four-star commit yesterday and an in-state player. Uh, well, and Jake, I figure you're going to like this next story. Um, I don't exactly know how to say his last name. There's a 2024 wide receiver, uh, Kylan Biot, maybe, Biliot, uh, B-I-L-L-I-O-T. There's a different few different ways you can pronounce that. But um, I think this is why you're going to appreciate it, Jake. He is someone that else who's had their eyes on, had not chosen to offer yet. He's going into senior year. Then he shows up at LSU's seven-on-seven camp, and he dominates. Yeah. Okay? And by the end of camp, he gets called aside, and he gets the offer from, quote, his dream school. And uh, the reason why I think this matters is I love when somebody does it. Not, I mean, I mean, it's not to say that, look, all offers are earned, right? Certainly. You do it because of the tape that you're putting on film in high school. But there's something to be said for being a guy that is maybe on the edge and you have to go prove it in front of the coaches, right? When the pressure's on, when you know that all the eyes are on you, and if it is indeed your dream school, like, that's what's hanging in the air. If you do well enough, you're going to get to play there. You're going to get that offer that you've always wanted. If you don't, you don't. And to perform under that pressure, I think those are guys that it's it's a good sign going forward. And the other part that I love about it, Jake, is you always talk about it. You know, the, the last member of the LSU signing class and just a kind of crazy run of success they tend to have. Or um, with baseball, we talk about guys like Cade Beloso, right? Um, your, your, your Louisiana guys that – maybe aren't your five stars, but they're the meat and potatoes, the, the kind of bones and sinew of these great rosters, the guys that love putting on the uniforms. You ha you need those guys, and it looks like Kylan is kind of cut from that same yeah. cloth coming from Homa. Uh, you know I love that. You know I'm going to be all about that, and there's so many stories we could give you of Louisiana guys like that, like you just laid. I mean, Jets went to camp like that. Think yep. about that. Like his brother was a starting quarterback. He had multiple brothers actually, you know, play at LSU. Another was a starting safety, and he had to go to camp, and he wasn't on the radar. Now, we got to check out why he wasn't on the radar, but he wasn't. And he goes to LSU camp, and is like, uh, we can't cover him. Uh, yeah. He needs to be on our team, and so they offer him there. And so I love stories like that. I That's love what guys, Billy I did. and I love yeah, I love guys from Louisiana because it means so much to them. And you heard me tell this to recruits the other day. This is a special place. It's not like anywhere else. You do not share anything with anyone else. Every other major school you share with someone in the state that is a big Power 5 program that's trying to get the same players. Now, it might be like a Georgia situation where Georgia Tech's down right now, Georgia's up, but there's certainly been times when Georgia Tech's been up and Georgia mm -hmm. has been down. It's not the case here. Every kid, I would say 98% of us, grow up wanting to do what? Play for one school and one school yeah. only. So when you realize that dream, when you have offers, but you're waiting on that offer and you get it, it's a special moment. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications we post every single day here on OTB LSU.